<clears throat> but oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Gnome Grown Podcast. I am Tanner Prittis, and in today's episode, we're going to be um, showing you how to grow cordyceps mushrooms. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I just want to do some housekeeping notes. Um, we usually we do a giveaway every episode, and um, we've been having a hard time actually getting like the information to get um, these prizes out to people, um, which is totally understandable. Um, but I think going forward, we're going to try and change up our giveaway structure. Um, if you guys have any ideas or, um, you know, any suggestions, uh, uh for a better giveaway system, please let us know. Um, we, I definitely want to keep giving you guys some free stuff, but we keep running into, uh, problems with people not, uh, reaching back out to us after they've won. Um, so if you did, if you did win the contests, um, if I've reached out to you, please uh, go to our website, gnomegrown.biz, and go to the contact button at the bottom and uh, send us an email. Uh, I want to get that stuff out to you, and then we're going to continue doing giveaways in the future. It just might be a little bit different. Um, but that's, that's it for uh, housekeeping notes, so let's get into the episode. Uh, like I said, we're going to be making, showing you how to grow cordyceps mushrooms, to, so to start, um, you can grow them inside of mason jars. That's what makes these mushrooms so fun to grow is there's basically a one-stop shop. Once you've put your uh, spawn in here and got it inoculated, um, it's just a waiting game. So pretty fun um, species of mushrooms to grow. So first we're going to make our lids. So for the lids, we have an injection port and two um, air holes. Um, I've noticed that two is a little bit better than one. Um, condensation will build up on the sides. You can't really see what's going on inside your jar. So um, two or three is great. Um, for these ones, we're going to just do two. So I'll show you how to make those. All right, so we're gonna make our um, injection port hole first. Jesus Christ, I'm destroying this place. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just try, I don't want you guys to hear this crazy sound. Okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit. So you get a nice big hole in uh, the middle for your injection. And we're going to do two on the side. So you got these beautiful holes now. I'm gonna please don't touch the mic. <laughs> Fucking knock it over. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so we're gonna put in our injection port. If you get this the right size and the right kind of injection port, uh, they'll just squeeze right in and then they'll like mold around that opening. Um, so we'll keep it nice and sterile. We're gonna put our filters on. Push all those metal bits in. Be really careful when you're making your holes. Um, you can really hurt yourself. Um, that's why I keep the lid on the jar, because then I'm not like holding it in my hand. I've done that in previous episodes and um, almost hurt myself. So just be really careful. Okay, so now that you have your jars made, now we're gonna add the grain. Um, so this recipe can actually make three mason jars, but we're going to just do two um, for the sake of time and ease. Um, generally, you use brown rice. So you're going to use a half cup of brown rice in each or a third cup if you have three jars. Um, we'll have a recipe in the description below. So we're going to do a half cup of brown rice in one. Thank you. 
And then just for fun, we're gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna use the whole oats in the other. Um, I grabbed a bunch of whole oats the other day thinking they were uh, wheat berries or rye berries. And then uh, I noticed once I started like simmering them, they got really all soft. And so um, I think they work really well. You just have to be more careful with uh, water saturation. Cause they get all squishy and gross. But we're gonna see if the cordyceps like them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you got your grain in there, and next you're gonna make your broth, your nutrient broth. Um so you're gonna do um equal parts water. Uh, to so you're gonna do the same amount of water that you do um, grain so since we use a half cup of each we're gonna do a half cup of each for the broth okay um, so there's a lot of different recipes that you can use um, a lot of people like to use uh, potato um, water um, right now what I have is this sweet wheat juice. I made some, um, wheat spawn a couple days ago. So I have this nice left leftover, uh, broth. So we're going to use that as our base. So we're going to do one cup since we have a half cu a cup of each. Okay. And then a half tablespoon of dextrose powder. A teaspoon of nutritional yeast. and a fourth teaspoon of azomite and gypsum. Um, we'll have an ingredients list in the description as well uh, with links to, um, to where you can find all this stuff. Uh, most of this stuff you can get at the store, uh, the dextrose powder and the, and the gypsum and the azomite you might have to get online. But they're all fairly cheap. And so that's it for the broth. Give that a nice stir, get it nice and incorporated. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. And then we're going to put a half cup of each into each of these jars. And be really delicate here. I don't want to spill. It's a great sound. I hope you could hear it. Okay. Oh God. I drank a little bit too much coffee. I'm a little shaky. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the preparation of um, your jars. Um, ideally, you want to use warm water because um, when you pressure cook this afterwards, um, it just brings it to a better temperature. You'll get a little bit more absorption. Um, and then the cool thing about these is you don't have to pressure cook them for as long as you would like some grain spawn. Usually you do like 90 minutes. I do two hours usually for my grain spawn. Um, but these ones, they, they are good and sterilized after just 60 minutes. Um, so it's kind of more time optimal. 
and that's it. So super, super easy. Um, and then we're gonna show you how to inoculate these. These ones are gonna have to go into a pressure cooker, but I brought some to show you. So these are the grow kits that we offer on our website. Um, they're already, you know, already sterilized. Everything's good to go. You just need to inoculate. Actually, no, they'd already be inoculated. So um, these is what you can find on our website. These also have uh, three breathing holes. They got the nice um, injection port. So I've noticed that a lot of websites, when they tell you how much um, inoculant you need, they tell you to use like a whole 10 cc syringe. I think that's overkill. Um, one is usually good for three. You could even spread that out to more. Um, I just think it's overkill and you get like a lot of, uh, you can get like wet rot as well. Um, so some of those websites, they won't give you direct information maybe because they want you to buy more of these. Um, but I, used, I usually do one for about three. Even though it's an injection port, you still just be as sterile as possible. There's a lot of, there's not a lot you can do to mess these up once they are already in this state, but better safe than sorry. Oh, just kidding, it just broke. But this was my cool, like, tabletop, um, uh, HEPA filter fan, but the, the wires just broke, so we're not going to use this, unfortunately. All right, so when inoculating, want to make sure that everything's nice and sterile. Get a nice bit of rubbing alcohol on there. Put some fire to it. Ooh. Okay. And then, like I said, we're only going to do about a third of this syringe into each. So when I um, inoculate it, I kind of like to go in like a little circle and then a little bit in the middle. So it gets around the edges. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, I should have wiped this weather one off. Wipe off your injection port too. Okay, um, and then the next part of growing cordyceps mushrooms, they need about 15 days of complete darkness to completely colonize. Light is actually one of the things that initiates the fruiting. Um, so after this, these are going to go into a box for about 15 days. After about 15 days, you bring them out, you put them in like room temperature, 70 to 75 degrees. Um, and then you should start seeing a lot of coloration. They'll be white. Um, they might have a little orange tint to it, but they're gonna start turning colors. And then you'll start seeing the little Cheeto fingers growing up. Um, it usually takes about 30 days um, to completely grow. Um, and uh, that's it. Um, so hopefully this uh, helped you understand how to grow cordyceps mushrooms. Um, you can use the substrate and the fruit itself um, for their uh, um, medicinal properties, although the fruits themselves have more concentration. Um, so that's it. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram and uh, Reddit, and check out our website at gnomegrown.biz. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace out.